called off my engagement because my fiancé invited my estranged, abusive dad to our wedding without my consent, despite knowing the trauma and pain he caused me. Now, I'm facing backlash from his family for my decision. AITA for prioritizing my boundaries and mental health over our wedding. I, 29F, met my ex 30 Tuam in college. He knew all about my troubled relationship with my dad. Growing up, my dad struggled with addiction, cheated on my mom, and left us in debt. I only learned about his emotional and physical abuse towards my mom and siblings when I was much older. As the youngest, my memories are fuzzy, so my family hid this from me, thinking it was best because they wanted me to have a good relationship with him. My dad wasn't actively involved in my life, and we didn't see each other often, even though my mom let him come by whenever he wanted. He would promise to take me out on weekends, but he'd never show up. When we did go out, he would yell at servers and threaten to beat slash KLL them, he'd get race strangers and go 100 miles an hour with me in the car, and he'd always criticize my mom to me I have so many stories, but two extreme ones are the times he tackled a boy my age for talking to me and started beating him. He left him bleeding on the floor and dragged me to the car, crying and shaking. The other is when he took me out for my 15th birthday, like my actual birthday, and abandoned me at the mall. It was about three cities over from where I live, and I didn't know what to do, so I decided to try to take the bus home. I got lost and called my best friend. She and her older brother went to pick me up. That was the last time I saw him. The crazy thing was that at the end of each visit he'd tell me to wait in the car for hours while he went to his friend's house. I just listened to music. It would be maybe two to three hours of us hanging out, and another four to five hours of me sitting in a car. My mom thought we'd hang out all day, but not. Despite my dad's behavior, we still spoke on the phone occasionally. I felt terrible that he didn't have anyone in his life, he'd tell me that all his family hated him, and I thought that was sad. Then, one day, my mom decided to divorce him. He refused to give her the divorce until I stepped in. I saw that my mom was finally confident enough to make this step and thought it was so cruel that he wouldn't do this for her. I told him that I thought it was unfair, and that I would like him to please do it for me. He agreed. And I felt our relationship would improve because he showed me he cared about me. Yet, even after the divorce, he remained distant and had another child, but he only reached out when he needed help with paperwork, writing emails or doing other favors. Eventually, he crossed the line by asking me to forge my mom's signature, and I told him I couldn't help him. He called me a stupid bitch like my mother. I told my family, he did a lot of reckless things but this was the first time he ever called me a name. That's when they told me the truth about his abuse and drug use. I knew he cheated, and we went through financial issues, but I didn't realize the severity of the situation. I realized that when he made it seem like he was just disliked and going through a rough time, he was trying to get sympathy from me. It wasn't that he was hated because he cheated, it was because of all the other crap he did. When I tried calling him, he texted me that I was ungrateful since I couldn't help with one little thing forging a document, considering he did me a favor by giving my mom the divorce, and I owed him. He blocked my number and his baby mama ended up texting me telling me that all the times he wanted to go out with me, he just used me as an excuse to borrow his sister's car, and he just needed the car to drive to his dealer's house for drugs or her sex house. I confided in my ex about my dad's manipulative behavior and my decision to cut him out of my life when we started getting serious. My ex understood and supported me. I feel like there are two versions of my father. The one I saw was reckless and careless, and I chalked up to him being lonely and missing his family and a darker version I never had encountered. I realized I should have said something about everything he did, but that I was just trying to make my dad and my family happy. He helped me get out of my people-pleasing ways. He helped me stick by my decisions and not feel guilty for saying no. He had a great relationship with my family, which made me feel even more confident in our relationship. I felt like I could rely on and depend on him. When we started planning our wedding, my ex asked about my dad, but I clarified that I didn't want him there. He hadn't been part of my life for seven years, and I wasn't ready to reconcile with him, especially not at my wedding. However, one day, I came home to find my dad there, invited by my ex to bury the hatchet. I was shocked and devastated. My ex's actions just wholly disregarded my feelings and boundaries. I couldn't believe he would do this knowing how I felt about my dad, and without asking me first. My dad commented on how glad he was. I came to my senses and how excited he was to go to my wedding, making suggestions that my half-brother could be the ring bearer. I asked my dad to leave and warned him not to contact me again. My ex was furious since he believed I should forgive my dad and work on repairing our relationship. 
but I don't understand why I should forgive him when he was the one who cut ties with me. More importantly, I couldn't forgive someone who hadn't even apologized for their past actions. He believed that enough time had passed to allow me to work on forgiving him, but I argued that it was not fair that I had to put in the work. My number hasn't changed. My dad hasn't done anything to show me that he's changed. Sure, he gave my mom the divorce, but he never apologized for any of the crap he pulled, and was happy to go along with the facade of him being a guy who cheated and made a mistake, so he was vilified. I asked him how long he'd been in contact with my dad, and it turned out he'd been in contact with him for six months. I felt so disrespected and hurt by my ex's actions that I decided to call off the wedding and told him we needed to rebuild the trust and communication in our relationship before we got married. But my ex refused, saying that it was either we get married or break up, so I ended the engagement. He knew I had issues with the lack of honesty and communication from so many people in my life, the decisions made on my behalf without regard for my feelings, and the years I spent trying to appease others. And yet, in attempting to force my father back into my life, it was like he was deliberately trying to set off my triggers. I still don't understand why he reached out to him if he said he understood my reasons for not wanting my dad there. I still love him, so it hurts, but I thought I did the right thing. Now it doesn't help that I'm getting so much hate from my ex's family, who are calling me names and blaming me for breaking his heart. They're calling me the off for being so sensitive about this and overreacting. With the flack I'm getting I'm starting to feel like the ah, did I do the right thing? Edit. A few people messaged me and asked me to update them. I was planning on deleting my account, but so many people took the time to give me advice and help me made me feel better. I can't express how validating it feels to know I made the right decision. I contemplated returning to my ex, but now I realize he might not have been the nice guy everyone thinks he is. And truth be told I was planning to stand up to myself to my ex's mom, but I lost my nerve because I started to think I was the ah, uh, and that's why I made the post. I also just started feeling like a jerk, I guess if you have a bunch of people telling you something you begin to believe it a little. I will contact my ex's mom and have a one-on-one -on -one with her. And I will tell my ex he needs to move all of his stuff out of the apartment. It's been about a month since we broke up, so he needs to get his things out. I will update if anything comes from that, but if I don't have anything else to say I'll delete it, thank you all for your support. I'm going back to therapy, but everyone who responded to my post gave me the reassurance I did the right thing. My dad hasn't come by my apartment, but I plan to move out. I've been staying in a sublet apartment since I didn't renew my lease at my last place, and my ex and I plan to move in together. I'm moving in with my sister. She has a den in her house she's converting into a bedroom, it's adding much more time to my commute, but it'll do for now. I'm going to change my number, and I'm not planning to give it to my ex or his family, but I did want to reach out to his mom. We've been a part of each other's lives for a long time, but I wanted her to know that this wasn't how I wanted things to be. Of the people who contacted me she was not aggressive towards me, I should have been clearer in my initial post, she was just very disappointed. My ex's dad, sister, cousins and aunts were the ones harassing me. And I was blocking them, but they were using other numbers. It probably belonged to other family members or their partners, and they were making fake profiles online so they could message me through Instagram. Even if a profile is private, you can still receive messages. I called his mom, and she was cold, but I explained how hurtful their treatment of me was. She was apologetic, but said people were just mad, and didn't understand how I could end our relationship because my ex asked if I wanted to invite my dad. I was confused and told her he asked me when we first got engaged. And I didn't immediately call off end our relationship by postponing the engagement because he invited my dad despite me telling him I didn't want him there. I only ended the relationship because he gave me an ultimatum. She asked why I never said anything to anyone and I told her because no one asked. I just got sent a bunch of hateful messages. Why would I respond to people who treated me like that? She was apologetic and told me she'd make sure her family knew. I told her it didn't matter, but I just wanted her to see because she was important to me, and I thought maybe I was essential to her too. She got unfortunate after that and started crying, so I guess she cares somewhat. I've gotten a few other texts from people, and they've been very apologetic too. I'm not expecting anything from those who haven't messaged me but it's nice to know that some people are willing to put their egos aside to apologize. I looked online but couldn't find a response about how long my ex can keep his stuff at my place. When we first broke up, I sent him an email and text, but he never responded. So I tried calling him, emailed and texted him again, and mailed him a letter letting him know that he had 30 days to get his things with copies of my initial text and email, asking him to claim his items. I don't know if he got the letter, but yesterday, he texted me and asked me if when he came to pick up his things, we could talk along. 
I was hesitant, but I guess I just want to put all of this behind me. And I want to make that clear to him in person. I told him we could meet in a public place. And he agreed. My brother drove me to a cafe this morning and waited on the outside patio while I went in to meet my ex. According to him, he got it in his head that he was going to make a childhood dream of mine come true, which was having a real relationship with my dad. I did tell him once that when I was younger and asked my dad to consider signing my mom's divorce papers. I hoped we could rebuild our relationship to the point where he could walk me down the aisle and dance with me at my wedding. But that was years ago before my dad blocked me, before I learned the truth about his physical, mental and emotional abuse toward my mom and siblings, and before I really came to terms with how manipulative and careless he'd been toward me. Plus, the whole thing was that I wanted to make sure that our relationship got to a point where he could come to my wedding. He didn't put in any effort or work to rebuild our relationship, so it makes no sense for him to just show up out of nowhere. He apologized and admitted that when he saw my reaction, he knew he messed up, but he didn't know how to admit that. So he only gave me that ultimatum as a bluff. He never expected me to actually break off the engagement, but he'd already dug himself so deep he didn't know what to do. He also said he lied to his family because he knew he was wrong and didn't want his family to hate him. He asked if we could work on our relationship and go to couples therapy. He told me we could start over, but I just said no. I don't think he had good intentions and pointed out, like so many others did, that he went against my wishes and brought my dad back into my life. He was six months in contact with an abuser and never told me his ultimatum. The fact that he realized he was wrong and didn't apologize, and the fact that he lied to his family was all very manipulative. A few people pointed out he might have a savior complex. I've been reevaluating our relationship, and I feel like that may be the case. Either way, none of that matters anymore. I don't want him in my life. I don't think he'll be trying to come back into my life anytime soon. He cares too much about appearances to try and pull anything. He's supposed to get his things tomorrow. My brother and uncle will be present, and they're both big guys. I know he's intimidated by them. I'm not planning to stay in the apartment in the meantime, and the only friend who knows where I'm going is my childhood friend of 20 years. I think that's it. Gonna stay single for a while, go to therapy, and just stay active and enjoy life. When my wife suddenly quit her job to become a traditional wife, without discussing it with me, I felt blindsided and disrespected. I threatened her with divorce, and now I'm torn between feeling like an overreacting jerk and believing she crossed a line that can't be uncrossed. Am I wrong for drawing a hard line, or is this the beginning of the end for us? I don't even know where to begin with this. I, 34M, and my wife, 33F, have two kids together, 11M and 9F. My wife and I have been together for 12 years and married for 8. Around a year ago, my wife began sending me these trad wife or traditional housewife TikToks. I have nothing against that type of relationship, but I don't think it makes sense in our current family situation. I do earn quite a bit more than my wife and enough to sustain our family on my own, but I don't see the need to do so. I work 80% and my wife 50%. Besides Wednesdays, when both of us are working, either one of us is always home for the kids. I could work 100% and let my wife be a satem, but again, both of my kids are attending school, and, in my mind, there is no need for my wife to be at home 24-7. She got increasingly pushy about it over the past two months, and again I just kept telling her that there wasn't any need for that. If we did decide to go down that route, what would she do during the hours my kids attended school? I know damn well our house doesn't need to be clean for six hours a day. She would constantly try to butter me up with, you would have dinner ready every day when coming home from work, and something about unlimited blowjobs or some BS like that. Again, in the nicest way possible, I would remind her that our kids weren't toddlers and our current work-life schedule allowed us to function perfectly fine. We got into a pretty heated argument two weeks ago about it, and my wife completely stopped having sex with me to show me what I would be missing out on. She's basically been treating me like a roommate since. I just thought she would get over it, and that this was just a phase, but God was I wrong. I came home from work yesterday and saw a bunch of presents on the dining table. At first I thought they were all for me since my birthday was in a week, but then I saw the labels on them addressed to my wife. I read one of the letters attached to one of the presents. The last sentence was literally, it was so a pleasure working alongside you, and I wish you all the best moving forward. I thought this was some sick prank. A few minutes later, my wife just casually strolled into the living room, acting like nothing was wrong. I guess she saw my mad expression and had the audacity to tell me, you'll get over it. I just lost it. I just left without saying another word and went to my parents' house. I feel absolutely disrespected. 
why the fuck would my wife think it was okay to just quit her job without telling me, and just expect me to be fine with it? My wife has been bombarding me with texts and calls demanding to know where I am, and that the kids miss me, I just told her to go find a lawyer, and that I was done with her. Then, I proceeded to block her. My son just sent me a voicemail crying and asking why I was divorcing mom, and if I was leaving the family, and I guess that kind of broke my heart. I haven't responded, and honestly I don't know what to say to him. My mother-in-law has also been demanding that I return home and apologize to my wife. My parents also seem to be siding with my wife since they are traditional Muslims. My mom also used to be a Asadam. I feel like I'm wrong for immediately jumping to divorce without hearing her out, and besides this whole job drama, I love my wife too much for this to be the end of our otherwise perfect marriage, but on the other hand, I feel like I've lost complete trust in her. Should I just swallow my pride and let my wife stay at home from now on, or should I follow through on divorcing her? How should I navigate this situation? I tell here. I suffer from a genetic heart condition that puts me at risk of stress-induced cardiac arrest. I used to work full-time but was forced to cut down on my work after suffering a silent heart attack. This was nearly a decade ago but since then, I've worked on my own physical and mental well-being. Some people didn't understand me constantly mentioning why it was such an issue working the extra 20%. I honestly don't know how much time I have left, and my kids are the most important things in my life. For my own mental health, it's essential that I get to spend time with my kids throughout the week. Besides my wife and kids, I have nothing. I hate my fucking job and purely continue for the sake of my kids and wife. Well, after spending a day at my parents' house, eventually, I felt enough time had passed for me to gather my thoughts on everything. What she did seemed like the ultimate slap in the face, but I went back with the intention to resolve this, and didn't want to escalate this fucking nightmare. My wife seemed happy when I returned but wasn't apologetic at all. The kids, especially my son, were ecstatic. That sort of made me ignore the lack of remorse for the time being. That same night after putting my kids to bed, I told her we needed to have a serious discussion. I told her how I felt about everything she did. The fact that she knows about my health condition and still went through with it. The fact that I set clear boundaries, and she still chose to quit her job without my consent. How the fact that she told my son that I was going to abandon the family really felt like a stab in the back. How, throughout all of this, she didn't even seem remorseful once. The fact that she chose her own happiness to my detriment. The fact I sacrificed so much for the family, and I got repaid like this. The fact that we now, as a family, have to make major lifestyle changes since a third of our family income vanished. For a split second, I saw an ounce of sadness in her eyes before she went right back to being annoyed with me. I then simply told her to lay out her half of the story. Here is a summary of what she said. She felt ignored by me, constantly rejecting her proposal. She had worked long enough and this was finally the time for her to enjoy her life as a true wife. She also said that I was being a baby about spending extra time with the kids. That really pissed me off, and we ended up getting into a heated argument. I couldn't bear any of it anymore and just ended up sleeping in the guest room. Until yesterday, nothing changed. She constantly tried to play everything off and wanted to embrace her new role by constantly trying to have sex with me and by making me my favorite dishes. It just felt like she was trying to manipulate me again. I wasn't having any of it. I just kept on sleeping in the guest room. Well, my birthday was yesterday. After work, my wife and kids picked me up, and we ate dinner together. This was probably the first time I genuinely had a smile on my face in a week. Well, that smile vanished, because she tried to seduce me again later that night. I rejected her, and to my surprise, she had a full-on mental breakdown. I just held her as she started apologizing for what she did. She claimed she didn't understand how much she hurt me, she was sorry for making me feel like an afterthought etc. We ended up sleeping in the same bed yesterday. I felt like things were finally moving in the right direction, and I asked her again about searching for a new job today. Instead of getting mad, she just replied with an, I need to think about it. Yeah, that's where things are as of today. It feels like progress is being made, but I. This just might be another manipulation tactic of hers. I'll probably make a final update in a month or so. Reddit isn't doing my mental health any favors. How would you guys move forward in this situation? Could I have done something better? Is she being genuine? And to those in cells who constantly bring up Islam as a way to justify her behavior, please shut the fuck up.
Life has been terrible for the past week. A lot of family drama and work has been more stressful than ever. I just notice myself reaching for whiskey more often than I usually do. I guess I'm just trying to drown out the misery for the time being. I'm scared I might turn to alcohol more often in the future. As of right now I'm drinking about two glasses of whiskey a day when I get back from work. It used to be one glass a week. My gut is telling me to stop, but I feel like a zombie just going through life. I don't have any energy or self-control left. I also have two young kids, and I definitely don't want to set a bad example for them. Is this normal? Should I remove all alcohol from the house immediately or am I overreacting? What would your guys' first steps be in my case?